Um, I have been studying the rhetoric of death and grief um, and the funeral industry for about a year. Um, oh, let's see, here we go. <coughs> Embalming is just sort of one element of that I have been studying, which I find really interesting rhetorically. Um, so basically, this is just one section of, of a larger, um, larger research I've been doing. So the name of my presentation is How to Live Forever, an Ideological View of American Embalming and Our Power Struggle with Death. And I'm sick, so I might cough. I really apologize. <laughs> All right. Um, in America, we value the ability to survive the odds and outlast our competition. We strive to be larger than life and hope to conquer ailments that come our way. It is, in fact, the American way to want to outlive our bodies because we don't like the essence of defeat. This desire to conquer is an ideology that we have created for ourselves over and over again. The funeral industry, and more specifically the practice of embalming, is another way that American culture is adhering to the hegemony of success over something as defeating as death. Therefore, our American response when something interferes with this ideology of survival is to fight death with whatever means that we can, even if we are ignorant of what those means entail. This is why we embalm. Um, first, one thing that I really want you um, to know as I'm going through this is that um, embalming is a very American cultural phenomenon. Embalming first became popular during the Civil War when it made it possible to send dead soldiers' bodies homes to their families. And therefore, modern embalming belongs exclusively to the United States of America and had its beginnings with the period of the Civil War. Um, then when President Lincoln, he was sort of the first celebrity person or known person that was involved and it made it able for um, him to have a funeral procession that was quite large and that's when sort of um, the common people started seeing embalmed bodies and they thought this was a great idea. Um, Gary Latterman who wrote uh, the book Rest in Peace, A Cultural History of Death in the Funeral Home in 20th Century America um, says this, in a relatively short period of time embalming became the enduring signature of the funeral industry a practice at the center of the economic, cultural, and religious funeral university can shape. The appearance of the body in an open casket, an element of death rituals in 19th century America, was judged according to new, thoroughly modern set of criteria by both embalmers and the public. Um, Jeff, Jessica Mitford wrote a book called The American Way of Death in 1963, and it made huge ripples in the waters of the American funeral industry. Um, and she says this about embalming. That is the uh, goal to outmaneuver the Grim Reaper as far as possible. All right, at the heart of this ideology, cultural normity, however, we have done ourselves a great disservice when it comes to the natural human emotion of grief. Once we become aware of the details of embalming, we understand that there are certain systems of representation that American ideology of embalming supports structurally and rhetorically. Um, also, by understanding the process of embalming and how it produces a power struggle with death in its literal and metaphorical language, we ultimately see that embalming can be an obstacle in the way of real human grief. Um, as I've been researching the embalming process and everything it entails, I found it interesting that the American public is not at all aware of the details of what that process is. Um, but I think in order to understand the rhetorical and ideological elements of embalming and how it creates this power struggle that we have with death, the idea of death, it's important to know the particulars and technicalities of embalming. Um, Jessica Mitford, um, this is her book, this is a revised edition. She wrote some extra stuff after sort of the funeral industry changed a little bit. Um, she says that Americans are blissfully ignorant of what it is all about, what it is done, how it is done. Not one in 10,000 has any idea of what actually takes place. And even now, 50 years later, after Mitford's first um, book came out, Americans are still very much unaware of this process. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, so because it's important to be aware of what the embalming process is to understand the ideology that it supports, we have to discuss it in detail. Uh, the process does not get unveiled to those arranging a funeral due to the violent nature of the details and the line that those details might cross in respecting a dead body. Um, despite this, Americans tend to view embalming as a procedure that produces some type of life back into the person they wish were not dead. This process itself has become hegemonized, providing a sense that things are the way they have to be, asserting that its meanings are the real and natural ones. Um, the process has been hegemonized because the funeral industry has stated over and over that it's a necessary part of the grieving process. Therefore, the power remains secluded within the industry because it appears that it's the way it has to be. The public then stands behind this ideology, assuming that it's the natural binary and not questioning the 